Hey guys, I'm Ivory and today I'm going to be talking about current launches that have come out and talking about whether or not I'm planning on buying them or not. I don't know if this is going to become a series, but for now I am calling it Get or Get Lost. And I have to give credit to my friend because she's the one who came up with it because I couldn't think of something catchy. She came up with a lot of good names, so I want to just run by you some of the names that came up for this potential series just because I thought they were really creative. So the first one she came up with is Win or Lose, but she spelled win N-G-U-Y-E-N because that is my maiden name before I got married. I thought that would have been really clever if I still had that last name. And then the next one was Aloha or Aloha, which was a nod to Miss Congeniality. It was when Sandra Bullock was talking to the girl and she's like, doesn't Aloha mean hello and goodbye? And she's like, okay, so. But it was a nod towards that and I loved that name, but I, didn't, I wasn't sure if you guys were gonna get it. So I ended up passing on it, but I love that name. So I just wanted to share with you the other names that eventually didn't make the cut. I'm gonna need your help because I haven't bought anything yet. But all the stuff that I'm considering buying, I would love to know your opinion if you want me to review it, because that will definitely help me figure out whether or not I should buy it. And if you see in the comments, you agree with someone, just go ahead and thumbs it up too. So that way I know what people really wanna see. I also really wanna quickly say thank you. On my last video, I talked about Willow and how she had surgery. Thank you for your well wishes. She is doing so much better. She is pretty much fully healed, although she does have a pretty badass scar on her rib cage. But I think once her hair grows back, it'll cover it up. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it here to say thank you personally. In between her schedule of her four hour nap, on top of yelling at every single person that passes by this house and squirrels. After that, she has to stare off into the distance and then sunbathe. So she's booked. But I think I speak for her when I say thank you so much for all the well wishes. It really meant a lot because it was a very stressful time for me. So just thank you. All right, so I'm gonna put up the images of the things that I'm interested in. Maybe I should scoot a little so that I can have more room to put the images. As you may already know, I no longer purchase from brands that are not cruelty free. So anything that isn't cruelty free is already a pass. So the first thing by ColourPop is the Wild Child Collection. This collection is right up my alley. It's smoky, it's neutral. I can see myself using all the shades. I am kind of worried that the blushes won't work for me though because I'm a light medium to medium skin tone. One of them looks a little bit too dark and the other one kind of looks like my foundation shade. So I feel like it wouldn't do anything on my face. Ultimately, I think I'm gonna pass on this collection because the palette looks like colors that I probably have or are very similar and the blushes like I said, I'm not sure if they would work for me. And then the rest of the collection, I'm not super interested in, so pass. The next thing is the Hourglass skincare line. The first thing is the Day Fluid. It has SPF 30, which is nice. Oh my God, it's $105. Okay, that's already a pass for me. <laughs> and then the serum is $240. Damn. Okay, so it's definitely a pass for me. That price tag is just, no. I wanna read some of the comments. So if I pay this much, the aging just, stops i'm guessing that's the only way i can justify that price so they solved the skin tone inclusivity issue by creating an income inclusivity issue nice for real though a lot of people are boycotting hourglass because there have been complaints that they're not very inclusive to darker skin tones the reason why i never bought for them really is because they are so expensive i have one loose powder it's the mini size and that was twenty dollars so even just the mini size is really expensive so the price tag is just way out of my range and the inclusivity issue isn't really helping them either so both those items are a pass the Next one is the ColourPop Melrose collection. This is also past one of the blushes, the not pink one, the more peachy one, I'm kind of interested in just because I don't have anything like it. The lip glosses, there's nothing really special about them. Look at the really brown one. If Can you imagine me having that on my lips? It would look like straight up dookie. I'm not a huge fan of lip glosses anyways, and the palette looks just really boring. I already have a lot of boring shades, so I don't feel like this would be adding to my collection. The next thing is the Natasha Love Mini Collection. The blush and highlighter, I'm not interested in. The eyeshadow palette though, I kind of into it. I like those colors. I do like those shades, but I feel like I already have them in both my eyeshadow palettes from Violet Voss, the HG Pro eyeshadow palette, and also the Huda Beauty New Nude. I feel like I have these shades, so pass. The next thing is Auric or Glow by Auric. That is the brand that just launched with Samantha Ravendahl. I love Samantha. I want to support her. I don't think I'm going to do any of her eye duo compacts. First of all, just two eyeshadows for $39 each, I'd rather just buy like an actual palette with lots of different shades. That's This is too expensive for me. For me, the price just doesn't justify what I'm getting, but the glow lust I am interested in. So let me know if that's something that you would like me to review. Next is BH Cosmetics. They came out with acne patches. This I am interested in just because I do get blemishes here and there and they always seem to happen the day before I'm gonna film. And then the rest of the week is smooth sailing, but then the minute I'm gonna film, they just pop up. So it'd be nice if I could have something to just make them die down quicker. So I am interested in this. So let me know if this is something that you would like to see me review. Cause I have tried other acne patches where you just put them on and they're supposed to die down the next day. I've tried them and they never work. So I'm open to trying it again. The next thing is by Rare Beauty. She came out with cream blushes, a lip balm and a liquid eyeshadow. I don't think I'm gonna do 
the lip balms or the liquid eyeshadows. However, the cream blushes I'm kind of interested in. Ever since I started using the ColourPop Super Shock, it's helped me kind of dip my toes into cream blushes. Also because I don't set my entire face anymore. So I, that's why I think cream blushes have been working a little bit better. Some of them still suck on me, but I am willing to try again because it is piquing my interest. And the Rare Beauty foundation that she came out with, I have grown to actually like it. I'm still kind of like eh on its own, but I always mix it with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. But I'm liking it a lot more since my skin is normalizing. So I'm open to trying this blush if you really want me to review it. Just stopping in at a later date because more stuff has come out that I wanted to talk about. So the next item is the Dominique Cosmetics Transition Palette. This color story actually is interesting to me, but I'm not gonna get this because I have a lot of those shades and for $48, I'm sure the quality is great because I do have two of her palettes and I really do like the mattes that she has, but for $48 and for colors that I already have, like even my eyeshadow right now, this is from BH Cosmetics. I mean, it's another neutral palette and I have a lot of neutral palettes. And the one that has all of these shades is from also BH Cosmetics actually. It's the Ultimate Neutrals palette. And that one is so cheap. I got it on sale, I think for like 15 bucks and it had 40 shades and it has pretty much every single one of these shades. So the fact that I could get good quality because I love that palette, it's good quality, it's cheaper and it has all these shades makes this a pass for me. And also this is just my opinion. I love Kristen Dominique, I am subscribed to her. I feel like her content and her makeup line has just gotten stale. Like everything is boring and it's very, it's, it is very her. All her looks are pretty neutral and easy. But I feel like once you've seen five of her tutorials, you've seen all of her tutorials. And also all these shades, it's like she just took her favorite eyeshadows from different palettes, but put it in her own formula and put it in her cosmetics line. So it's very been there, done that. And also you can get that way cheaper. The next thing is the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint SPF 30. It says new and improved, so I don't know if this was already in their line and they just improved the formula, but either way, I will not be getting this. The fact that it is light coverage is not appealing to me because as someone that has acne and discoloration, you know that when something, for example, says full coverage, it doesn't really look full coverage on you. It may look more medium because of how much more you may have to cover up. So whenever a foundation says it's some type of coverage, when I apply it, it's one level below that. So if something says it's full coverage, it's medium coverage on me. If something says it's medium coverage, it's sheer coverage on me. So the fact that this is sheer, I might as well just put water on my face or lotion. So it just doesn't really seem appealing to me other than the fact that it has SPF, but I already have sunscreen that is SPF 50 and this one's SPF 30. So it's just not my jam. The next thing is the Morphe Filter Effect Soft Focus Foundation. When I'm filming this right now, it comes out tomorrow. I am planning on getting it. It's got a lot of things that I'm into right now, the hyaluronic acid. It says it's natural buildable coverage, which I feel like is a little bit of a cop out because when you say natural buildable coverage, I mean, every foundation is buildable, but I love how they don't tell exactly what type of coverage you're gonna get. Is it sheer buildable coverage? Is it medium buildable coverage? Which one is it? The fact that they didn't put that in there, it seems weird to me because from what I remember, the first foundation they ever put out, the fluidity one, they were very open about the fact that it is full coverage. The fact that they didn't say anything and left it open to interpretation seems odd to me, but all the other things that they're saying is appealing to me. So I am planning on getting that foundation and reviewing it for you guys. So just be on the lookout for that. The next thing is the ColourPop. I have a lot of ColourPop in here. The Love Struck Five Pan Palettes. There are five different ones. I'm pretty sure they're trying to copy the aesthetic and packaging of Natasha Denona. If not, they look eerily similar. These are really affordable, so I'm definitely open to trying these. I like pretty much every single one except the last one, Ballad. So those are the ones I would most likely get. The next thing is the Physicians Formula Matte Butter Bronzer. I do plan on buying this. I liked the original butter bronzer. I didn't love it. I actually didn't like it because it had a little bit of a sheen. I prefer something matte. So the fact that they came up with something matte is right up my alley. I love the smell. I loved everything else except for the fact that it had a little bit of a sheen. So once I run out of this bronzer, I will go ahead and purchase that. The Wet n Wild Tinted High Hydrator, sheer to medium coverage, semi-matte finish. I don't think it's for me. I think I prefer medium coverage. And for me, this is really easy to recreate if I wanted something to be more sheer. I could take any foundation, add a little bit of lotion, and there you go, it's a tinted moisturizer. So to me, this just isn't really appealing to me, so I will be passing on this. So the next thing is by Pixi. They came out with a couple of eyeshadow palettes. And they also came out with, it's called a cream rouge palette. It's 25 cream shades that can be mixed or layered, and they can be either a lip stain or they can be applied to the cheeks. This. I might get. I like the the range. There's wearable colors. There's bold colors. Out of everything, I would get that one because that could be like a one and done type of thing. And I would never have to buy lip products ever again. The next thing is the it Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation. From what the bottle says, it has skincare in it and improves bare skin in two weeks. Water light, medium coverage, natural radiant finish. Oh man, they know just what to say to get me to buy this. Damn it. I do really love the It Cosmetics. I have it right here. The CC Cream, the matte version. Oh my God, I love 
this foundation or CC cream, whatever. It's like they watch my videos and then they put in the buzzwords that they know I like to hear. Every single time I see there's a new foundation, my eyes just like light up. So please let me know your thoughts of all the things I'm interested in because your opinions are a big input into whether or not I actually pull the trigger on these. I really enjoy talking videos both to watch and to do just because for one, I don't actually have to buy new product. It seems like whenever I make a video where I'm just talking to you guys, you guys are a lot more active in the comments, which I really like because that's, that's the best part about making my videos is talking to you guys and getting feedback. So I'd love some feedback about whether or not you'd like that. I was thinking about doing story times. I have the story of how I found out that my ex was cheating on me. Don't worry, I didn't marry the guy. I was also potentially thinking of doing a video of a day in the life of a foster dog, just to show you what I do on a day-to-day -day basis because I do constantly foster dogs. Those are just a couple ideas. If you have any, feel free to let me know. But that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below what other videos you'd like to see from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.